Hey Rocketeers, today our mission is to decipher all things core web vitals and optimize them on WordPress. So buckle up, get ready, and let's get started. Passing the core web vitals assessment is super important for the success of any WordPress website. So you want to get things right from the get go. And in this video, we'll show you exactly how you can go about optimizing your CWV on WordPress. And also don't forget to drop us a comment if you have any questions. And you can also like the video and subscribe to our channel for more content on web performance it would really mean the world to us. Now back to the topic at hand, what exactly are Core Web Vitals? Core Web Vitals are an initiative from Google designed to measure and improve UX on the web. Instead of focusing on generic metrics like how long it takes your entire website to load, Core Web Vitals focuses on how your WordPress site's performance connects to delivering a high quality user experience. Users care a lot about how fast they can start interacting with a page. And that's precisely what the Core Web Vitals metrics aim to measure. Now, there are three CWV metrics, largest contentful paint, first input delay, and cumulative layout shift. These three metrics each measure a specific element of a user's experience. And according to Google, these metrics are the most important ones to provide a great user experience. Also, if you think that these names are confusing or if you tend to mix one metric with another, don't worry. We'll explain each one in the easiest way and show you how to improve all of them in this video. To first get started, let's begin with LCP. Largest Contentful Paint, or LCP, measures how long it takes for the most meaningful content on your site to load. For most WordPress sites, that's usually the hero section or a featured image. According to Google, how long it takes for a page's main content to load affects how quickly users perceive your site to load. For example, if you land on a page and don't see the top image fully displayed right away, you would probably be annoyed, right? You would probably even think about leaving the page right away. Now, here's why the LCP metric is closely related to a user's experience, more than just the overall site's loading time. It should be known that the LCP element is different for each site, and it's also different between the mobile and desktop versions of your site. Sometimes the LCP element could be just an image, while other times it could be just text. It really depends on your site. Now, according to Google, a good score means that the LCP should be less or equal to 2.5 seconds. The next CWV metric is first input delay. First input delay measures how long it takes for the browser to respond to the first user's interaction with a page such as clicking on a link. If you click on a button to expand to an accordion section, how long does it take for your site to respond to that and show that content? That is precisely what first input delay is. For example, let's say you land on a site from a mobile device and click the link, but you don't get an immediate response. It could be because your phone is busy processing a large file from that site, and that is something you do not want to happen. In fact, you need that response to be instant. This means that a good FID score needs to have a first input delay of less or equal to 100 milliseconds. Now, onto the last CWV metric, cumulative layout shift. The cumulative layout shift metric measures how visually stable the page is. It measures how much of your site's content shifts or moves around as it loads. For example, let's say you're about to click on a link or a call to action, and you can't do it because your content has just moved down after being fully loaded. This is something that causes a terrible user experience and it's a layout shift. The same goes for when you accidentally click the wrong button because the late loading content caused a button to shift. Or have you ever been on a news website where the content in the article keeps shifting around as the site keeps on loading ads and you're just unable to keep on reading? That is also a layout shift too. With those examples given, you can definitely see how the cumulative layout shift is super annoying for users and how they will have a poor experience with your site. And every time that the content will shift, that counts as a layout shift. A good CLS score should be equal to 0.1 or less. So now that you have a better understanding of what these three metrics mean, how can you actually improve these metrics? Well, luckily for you, that's what we're about to show you right now. There are eight high impact steps you can take to tackle poor metrics and improve your core web vitals. The first and most impactful action is to delay the JS execution time until user interaction. This will optimize JavaScript resources and prioritize the scripts needed for interaction by delaying the JS files and their execution until user interaction. You should also delay all the JavaScript files that affect loading time and interaction for no reason. Now, by delaying all the JavaScript files that slow down your loading time, you'll improve your FID score. You'll also address the reduced JavaScript execution time page speed insight recommendation. This will also have an impact on the eliminating render blocking resources and reduce unused JavaScript files recommendations. 
So now you're probably wondering, well, how can you delay the JS resources? Well, there are a few different options. If you're looking for a free plugin to delay the JavaScript files, you can use a plugin called Flying Scripts. Another way to safely tackle any unused JavaScript is to take advantage of WP Rocket. With WP Rocket, you can activate the delayed JavaScript feature in the File Optimization tab. Render blocking resources like JavaScript files are one of the main causes of a bad LCP score. By deferring these JavaScript files, it will help you address this issue. Also, by deferring JavaScript files, these render blocking resources will be loaded after the browser has rendered the most relevant content. That is, the content needed to let the users interact with the page. Also, since there won't be anything to block the process, rendering and loading time will be much faster and both the LCP and the FID metrics will improve. You can also add the defer attribute to the JavaScript files so that the browser can detect the resources to defer. The browser will then analyze the HTML and build the DOM tree with no interruption. However, the easiest way to manage the JavaScript resources is to once again take advantage of WP Rocket. In the file optimization tab, WP Rocket's load JavaScript deferred feature will help you change the priority of the JS files being loaded. Whichever method you choose, you'll address the eliminate render blocking resources and the reduce the impact of third-party code from the PageSpeed Insight recommendations. One of the main reasons for a bad LCP score is a slow server response time. You can measure your server's response time by looking at the time to first byte, aka TTFB. Every time you want to consume any piece of content, the browser sends a request to the server. The TTFB measures how long it takes for the browser to receive the first byte of content from the server. Now, by improving your TTFB, you'll improve your server response time and the LCP score. With that being said, there are two ways to fix a bad server time. First, you can enable browsing and page caching, and second, you can choose a fast hosting service. By enabling page caching, your site's pages will be stored as HTML files on the server after the page is loaded for the first time. As a result, the content will be displayed much faster. And with that being said, WP Rocket can easily take care of browser and page caching with no effort from your side, since it enables 80% of web performance best practices automatically. And also, as we said, a fast hosting can make a huge difference in your performance and maybe it might be time to upgrade your hosting plan. Your hosting provider should have servers close to the majority of your users, and the closer your users are to the server, the faster the data will be sent. You should also make sure to choose the right server host type. A dedicated hosting server will ensure you the fastest performance. With making that decision for hosting, it's important that you take into consideration with how much traffic your site is getting. Now, by enabling caching and choosing a faster hosting, you'll take care of the following page speed insight recommendations. You'll reduce the server response time, AKA the time to first byte, and you'll serve static assets with an efficient cache policy. Another high impact action to improve your LCP is to compress text files. Compression means to zip your files in a smaller and lighter format so that they will load faster. And once you reduce their size, the transfer between browser and server will be much quicker. With the browser now being able to load these resources faster, your load time will improve. So here's what you should do. Compress text files such as HTML, CSS, or JavaScript resources. Use compression formats such as gzip and Brotly. On the one hand, gzip is supported by most of the host. And on the other hand, Brotly is more performant and currently recommended by most. Now, you can easily enable gzip compression on WordPress by using a plugin such as the Enable gzip Compression plugin or WP Rocket. This will help you address the enable text compression on the PageSpeed Insight recommendations. Optimizing images is another relevant way to fix a bad LCP score. Images are often the LCP element from either mobile or desktop. Desktop. And by improving their loading time, you'll boost the LCP performance. And here's what you can do to fix any performance issues that you have about images. You should just convert your images to new formats. Overall, Google recommends the WebP format. And this is why all WordPress image optimizer plugins now include the option to convert images to WebP. Other formats you might want to take into account are JPEG 2000 and JPEG XR. These formats are smaller than the JPEG, PNG, and GIF ones and help improve your website's performance. Another tip is to use responsive images. You shouldn't be using the same image's size for desktop and mobile. For instance, if the desktop image size is large, then the mobile image size should be medium. 
With using page builders like Elementor, they will allow you to upload different image sizes according to the device. With that being said, mobile image optimization is pretty essential and the mobile score matters the most. Another thing that you can do is use a static image instead of a slider. This is because sliders can be very heavy to load because of the code. And on the other hand, a static image made by HTML code is lighter and faster. Also, what you should do is compress and resize your images. This will reduce the file size without losing the quality. And the smaller the image dimension is, the faster the loading time will be. And to be clear, if you use a tool to optimize your images on the desktop, you will only optimize the original size. So that means that the images that you upload on WordPress will not be resized. And as you may know, in WordPress, there are different image sizes. So unless you use a proper image optimization plugin, you won't optimize anything for performance. With that being said, if you do want to optimize your images, Imagify is the perfect solution for you. You'll reduce the image's weight without sacrificing any of the quality, and you'll save plenty of time. Another tip for you is to exclude the LCP element from lazy loading. While overall lazy load helps improve loading time, it can make the LCP score worse especially when the LCP is an image and it gets lazy loaded. That's why excluding the LCP element from lazy load and displaying it directly in the HTML of the page is an excellent way to optimize your LCP score. So by optimizing your images, you will have addressed the following page speed insight audits. Serve images in next gen formats, properly size images, efficiently encode images, and avoid enormous network payloads. Now let's talk about fixing images and videos with out dimensions. Images and videos without dimensions are a common cause for a layout shift. If you don't specify the width and height size attributes, the browser doesn't know how much space it has to allocate while loading these elements. And likely, the space reserved will not be enough. As a result, once these elements are fully loaded, they will take up more space than expected, and the content already displayed will shift. You can solve this issue by including image dimensions on images and video elements in different ways. One of the simplest ways to fix CLS is to include the width and height attributes on your images and video elements in your WordPress CMS. Also, WordPress adds image dimensions by default, so this action should be automatically resolved. So in case you're facing any issue, keep in mind that WP Rocket automatically includes any missing width and height values to images. The only thing that you have to do is select the add missing image dimensions options in the media tab. It's just that simple and that easy. Now, by including the size images, you'll serve images with correct dimensions and address the PageSpeed Insights opportunity of serve images with correct dimensions. The same dimension issue goes for ads, embeds, and iframes. Once again, not reserving enough space makes these dynamic elements push down the content already displayed. Therefore, new layout shifts will occur on the page. You'll manage this problem by assigning fixed dimensions to the ads and managing the size reserved for such elements through specific tactics. There are several best practices to avoid any layout shifts for ads, embeds, and iframes. What you can do is assign fixed dimensions to the ads so that you'll reserve enough space for the ads to be loaded. You can also reserve the biggest possible space for ads, where historical data will come in handy to assess what's the best dimension for each ad slot. You can also keep every space reserved for ads that have not been displayed. In other words, you shouldn't collapse any area on the viewport. You could rather include a placeholder or a fallback element. Or you can place non-sticky ads in the middle of the page. And with that being said, the recommendations for managing embeds and iframes are similar to the ones for ads. In particular, you should pre-compute enough space for such elements. Once again, historical data can be useful to understand how much space you should reserve. Placeholder or fallback is an excellent solution to manage the unknown embed size. Also, dynamic content such as banners can also affect the cumulative layout shift. This means that you should avoid displaying new content unless it's triggered by user interaction. How you can do this is by taking advantage of the delay JavaScript execution provided by WP Rocket to control the dynamic content above the fold. So by doing that, you will have taken care of the following page speed insight recommendations. Avoid large layout shifts and avoid enormous network payloads. So there you have it, the eight most impactful actions to optimize your core web vitals. Delay the JavaScript execution time until user interaction, defer JavaScript, 
improve the time to first byte and reduce server response time, compress text files, optimize images, fix images and videos without dimensions, manage space and size for ad slots, embeds, and iframes, and manage dynamic content. Of course, there are some more steps you can take to grab some extra points. For example, removing unused CSS helps improve loading time and the LCP metric. It also improves the interactivity and the FID metric. To avoid layout shifts and improve your CLS, you should also preload fonts. And using a CDN for global audiences will also help you improve your LCP. Now you have everything you need to optimize your core web vitals. As we say in France, voila. Also, don't forget to let us know how it went. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos about web performance. Bye for now, Rocketeers.